Thanks for joining our video today. My name is Steve Williams with Infotech Design Solutions. I'm a president and system architect, and today I'm joined by... Hey everyone, my name is Maddie Killen. I am a cloud applications consultant here at Infotech. Today we're gonna to be talking about Microsoft 365 and giving an overview of the applications. <clears throat> everyone is really familiar with Microsoft 365 at this point, and you know, it's about, you know, going into the depth of those capabilities, right, Maddie? Yeah, but what not everybody understands is just how many applications there are in the Microsoft 365 universe. Very true. Uh, everyone's used Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and, you know, those are kind of the core uh, suites that have been around for decades at this point. But not everyone knows about the Microsoft's suite of cloud applications, and that really takes your collaboration to the next level. Now, email is also one of the core things that people are thinking about when they move to Microsoft 365. But using Microsoft 365 for email provides many other benefits uh, than having just your basic email server. Definitely. Having your own email server is a lot of work. You have to take care of uh, you know, the equipment, the premise, uh, the, you know, the hard drive space, uh, internet connectivity. Moving that to the cloud makes so much sense. But Microsoft even goes beyond that. Uh, if you're using another cloud provider, it's unlikely you're getting the number of features and capabilities you get with the Microsoft platform. And at the end of the day, a lot of it just has to do with Outlook. But, you know, it's it's more than just large mailboxes and organizing. It's, it's about collaboration today. Right. And Microsoft 365 has really taken Outlook to the next level. Uh, they're putting a lot of emphasis on mobility and sharing files and really giving remote and field workers the ability to work how they need to, whether it be online or on a physical uh, desktop. Teams is probably one of the newer components to the Microsoft 365 suite. And certainly uh, it's really, you know, built a whole new value proposition around Microsoft 365. Yeah, Teams didn't just come in and replace Skype for business, it blew it out of the water and really enhanced how organizations are communicating and just elevated everything to the next level. Teams has made it e very easy for scheduling and execution of video meetings. It's very uh, mobile. You can access it on both mobile devices and desktop and uh, online. It has, it goes beyond chat and it really, and it, it hooks into Outlook and it brings in files from SharePoint and Microsoft has really put an emphasis on bringing in a lot of third party enhancements so that you can work how you need to. I'm sure we could spend a whole session on Teams, but you know what makes all of this work that we've talked about? Think of Teams as just a window pane that lets you see you know, what your coworkers are doing, brings in data from other places in Microsoft 365, uh, lets you see calendars, basically the core functions of your business. So basically the Microsoft Cloud is creating this you know, world of flexibility and also providing that peace of mind with the security. Right, their cloud is the backbone of all the new apps in your organization. And it's providing a whole suite of apps that enhance everything you're doing with Office 365. So SharePoint's the next platform? Yes, SharePoint is an internet platform and it's actually been around for quite a while. Think of SharePoint as the internal hub for your organization. Here you can share company news and post critical announcements. You can display a company directory and list of important links that your employees use every day. You can create secure document collaborations on a department level. And you can also use it as a training hub for onboarding new employees. SharePoint is what your business needs it to be. And it's a flexible web platform. You don't have to be a programmer to use it, right? Correct. I think that's what people need to understand. I, I think intranet's kind of an intimidating term. It's been around for a long time, but then knowing that, you know, SharePoint doesn't require me to be a programmer, that I can drag and drop or click menus to create things and interact with it, uh, that, that makes it a little less intimidating. Right, SharePoint's very easy to self-manage. Well, OneDrive is another part of SharePoint. It's in the back end. It's helping with all that storage, but 
people often just think of OneDrive as, you know, like a Dropbox or something like that. But it really goes way beyond that because it integrates with all these products we've talked about. Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, Teams, SharePoint. They all connect to OneDrive seamlessly for a better experience. And, you know, one of the things we see a lot is that people are synchronizing their OneDrive to their local device, whether it's a cell phone or a laptop or even a tablet. They can access their files whether or not they have internet access and know that once they get that internet access back, that that file change is synchronized to the cloud. And by synchronizing the cloud, it's now synchronized to all their other devices that might be connected, whether it's a computer back in the office um, or another mobile device. Plus sharing with OneDrive. Uh, OneDrive allows you to share information internally as well as externally, and you can do things like Turn, you know, set a notification when someone accesses the information you've shared or set it to turn off automatically. OneDrive works with SharePoint and all the other products and it just enhances the whole experience. Right. And it really gives your employees the ability to be de- device agnostic. They can go anywhere and access the same information. There's no multiple files floating around. I like to think of OneDrive as, you know, your personal cloud depository and SharePoint as your company's cloud depository. But they really work in the same way. That's a great description. And there's still more. This is really my favorite part about what Microsoft 365 has been doing. They've been introducing all these new applications that really people have never even heard of. Well, I think that's an important note. I mean, certainly there's some items on this slide, but every you know month, every quarter, every year, Microsoft keeps adding more and more. And it's a huge statement to the value that you can get from a Microsoft 365 subscription. Right. And so we're just touching on a few of these applications here. These are the ones near and dearest to my heart. Uh, Power Automate is an incredibly useful tool for creating even the simplest automation flows to uh, being the backbend for extremely complex line of business applications. Almost everything I do uh, uh, hooks into uh, either SharePoint or OneDrive or your Outlook or your Teams, and Power Automate is kind of the goop that makes everything go from A to B. Forms is another really a useful tool. You can collect intake information for new uh, for applicants. You can create quizzes. You can conduct customer satisfaction surveys. You can send these forms by email. You can post this to an internal Teams channel, and you can even embed these on your website. And what's great is since it lives in the Microsoft 365 environment, all that information is not just floating out there on the web. It stays inside your environment, so it's nice and secure. Stream's the last one. Think of Stream as like an internal YouTube channel for your business. Here you can elevate your training videos by giving your new hires a custom internal playlist to go through. You can even share recordings of your video meetings. Teams will automatically hook into your stream to upload videos after you're done recording them. There's really so much you can do, and we're not even touching on a whole host of other applications that Microsoft provides. And I know that we have some great real case examples of solutions we've delivered to clients, whether it's using Power Automate to streamline new hire hiring processes for employment or using things like Microsoft Forms for COVID-19 compliance surveys um, or even just using Stream to help uh, record training video companies. We've done all those kind of projects just helping customers explore and understand the capabilities of Microsoft 365. But if people want to learn more on their own, Uh, What should they do, Maddie? That's a great question. Our goal is really to give you as much information as possible, but it's not super helpful if you don't have the right tools. The analogy of the auto mechanic with a fancy toolbox. Yeah. You can have all the tools in the world, but if you don't know what the right tool is for the problem, you'll never fix that car, right? Right. So what we want to do is break down this learning into three approaches, general knowledge, application specific, and task specific. Microsoft has provided a tremendous amount of education material online. For learning, we recommend their site dedicated to the Microsoft Office products. That's going to be support.microsoft.com. Here you can search for a program to learn better. Um, You can search for a specific task if you run into a specific problem. Um, You can search for any new features. Think of this as your starting point, the just broad overview of 
Microsoft suite and products. If you want to do application specific learning, there's a lot of uh, uh, great tools that are really typically focused towards it. In particular, uh, you know, if you th just give the example of using Excel to manage a sales forecast or you know, using Teams to do a poll, um, those are application specific type things. Also, they have quick start guides and, and the quick start guides really focus on just that program. What are the features? What are the capabilities? Maybe what kind of devices uh, you might use the product on or what that experience might be like on different devices. And so we always recommend the quick start guides. The, the approach that we would recommend if you're thinking about like, how do I improve Excel usage in my company? Or how do I get people better with PowerPoint? Think of finding a champion on one of your teams or inside your company that you know is already kind of proficient with the product or has some background knowledge as a starting point. Give them the quick start guide or give them this web link and let them get started really digging in and learning that. And then what happens is you pull together your team and that champion can share the information. And, and what we see with our clients is that the champion is able to share that information in a contextual way that really helps the learning experience for their coworkers. They can apply it to things that are job specific or culture specific to your company, and it really helps the adoption and learning process. The next thing we want to talk about is task specific help. So you've run into a specific issue. Um, you don't know how to format a table in Excel. You want to set up Outlook on your Apple phone. This is where support.microsoft.com comes into the rescue again, but more specifically the search functionality. Simply type your issue or question into that search bar and the site will bring up every relevant article that will help get you moving again. Uh, like I said, if you want to search how to set up Outlook on your phone, type that into the search bar. It's going to bring you up a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. And most of the articles even come with a video. These are approachable, non-technical -tech documents that, as end users, will help you make the most of your Microsoft 365 experience. As you know, Excel is my favorite product. And I remember using this site when I first was learning how to do a pivot table. And I was really surprised to see that there's like a walkthrough step-by-step -step yes. video to create a pivot table. Yes, it's very approachable for end users. That's why I like recommending it. Awesome. Well, Maddie, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and helping with this presentation today. And I think there's just so much that uh, people can see is in the suite of services with a Microsoft 365 subscription and, and certainly getting started with learning in that journey. Welcome, and I hope this encourages everyone to learn more and just I hope our passion comes across in these kind of videos and we just want to empower our end users to maximize their Microsoft 365 experience. Agreed. We'll post the links in the description of this video. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel to get notified when we post new content. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining, joining us. us.